Our traditional understanding of stress has evolved through much research. Uh, we used to think that stress is something that's kind of uh, come from nowhere and just kind of hit you, it's undefinable. But actually we know that the stress enters our body much like you entering a house through the five senses, the ears, the nose, what you see, what you smell, uh, what you hear. And those signals through the five senses are then converted into chemical signals. And it's these signals that go from the brain all the way down to the rest of the body is primarily through what we call the neuroendal metabolic pathways that our body responds like an orchestra to the stress that we experience. And this neuroendal metabolic stress response is critical because it is a built-in mechanism that we all have. When it works, then you will be able to deal with stress, whether it is a long day of work or being screamed at by your boss, or you have a tremendous pressure in finance, uh, or if you can, you can fall apart if your body is unable to perform those neuroendometabolic stress response function the way it is. So if the stress is too much or uh, more than your body can handle, especially over a period of time, the body's internal built-in mechanisms start to malfunction. And that's when problems we see. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so actually some of the examples of stress that your hormone circuit actually deals with is such as if you encounter emotional stress in your life, then estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone they help to regulate anxiousness, irritability moods, and kind of depressed moods. And then if you encounter metabolic stress inside of your body, then your organs such as your thyroid and your adrenals produce hormones to balance your blood sugar and metabolism in your, in your body to encounter that stress. And then lastly, if you have physical stress in your body, then um, you know the adrenals also put out the hormone cortisol to kind of fight out fight these uh, stressors in your body. So it doesn't matter where the stress is coming from, and no one can survive and live in this world without a certain amount of stress, which is constructive. The key to understand is, is your body's stress response strong and healthy to help you automatically without you even knowing it, okay? So whenever you have imbalances, then the hormonal circuits become one of the first circuits out of the six circuits to get affected. Most people don't understand. They don't uh, understand that, you know, as there are subtle signs and symptoms that can really be the body's whispers to you. By the time they feel symptoms, it's already too late. Imbalances of the hormonal circuit, which is out of the six circuits that's controlled the neuroendometabolic response, is not equal. The three uh, systems that is responsible, the adrenals, the thyroid and the gonads, which is the ovaries in the female and the, and the testicles in the male, they work in unison. But one of them may be more dominantly weak compared to the others. So it depends on which one is the problematic, then the most predominant symptoms of imbalance will show up first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for example, uh, those people who are mostly thyroid dominant in terms of weakness will show up with fatigue in the low uh, body temperature, dry skin, uh, inability to lose weight, especially in the center. Uh, that is very classic of people who are dominantly weak in the thyroid. Okay? On the other hand, uh, if you have a dominant weakness in the um, uh, ovarian or the gonads, even for male or female, doesn't matter, then you're going to have more emotional swings, more irritability, mood uh, instability, that type of symptoms. So your symptoms tell you a lot. It's not just all a matter of just convoluted. It really makes sense if you understand the physiology of what each hormone does. The adrenals regulate over 50 hormones, and each of those hormones goes to a different pathways. So by understanding which pathway do what, then it translates into different symptoms, and a proper history will then tell us what is really going on. Uh, right. Carrie. And so, like you said, there are different symptoms that can correlate with the different um, parts of the hormone circuit. So people with adrenal dominance, maybe they're feeling a little more irritable, they're more 
fragile emotion wise and they're a little more anxious and they get easily triggered by <coughs> anger. Um, those that have a more reproductive system dominance, they might have more brain fog um, and the, even estrogen dominance symptoms like breast tenderness, irritability, and water retention. And then those who are thyroid dominant might have the inability to lose weight and have the dry skin, the nail issues, and the constipation. And so um, these, all these symptoms, in addition to fatigue, um, feeling the breast tenderness like we talked about, dry skin, sleep disturbances, joint aching, exercise intolerance, those are all ways and ways that we can see these symptoms of hormone circuit dysfunction.